Now, today we're talking about food allergies on the programme. They mostly affect children, but they affect some adults as well. And it does seem that food allergies are becoming more common, at least in the West. Why and what can we do about it? Let's ask our health editor, Julia Seeger, who's in the studio with me. Hi, Julia. Hi, Nadia. First of all, what is it that causes food allergies? Well, actually, food allergies are an abnormal immune system response. So when your body is in touch with a virus or a pathogen, it uh, develops, of course, uh, antibodies to fight it. Well, uh, when a person has an allergic reaction, it's the same thing. It's going to uh, wrongly recognize some of the proteins that are contained in a food as being harmful, and it's going to create uh, those anti antibodies and uh, it's going to release a chemical called histamine which actually creates inflammation and then you're going to have symptoms that can occur they can occur uh, right after uh, exposure to the food so a couple of hours or minutes after exposure or uh, it can also happen uh, after a second exposure. So it really depends. And usually symptoms are quite mild, but in some cases they can actually be deadly. Uh, it can actually go to uh, the uh, an anaphylactic shocks, of course. Uh, so there are different types of symptoms. You have swelling of the tongue, mouth, and face, difficulty breathing, low blood pressure. Those are the most common uh, food allergy symptoms. Now, it's often uh, mistaken, food allergies are often mistaken for uh, food intolerances. So what's the difference? Well, uh, food intolerances never involve the immune system and they are not deadly, even though in both cases you're going to have to learn to uh, avoid those allergens in your diet. Okay, Julia, and when can food allergies appear and how can they be detected? Well, they usually appear before the age of four years old because at that age, well, your digestive system and your immune system is still uh, not yet mature, so it makes, makes kids more susceptible to allergies. Now, there are warning signs, especially for younger kids. Uh, if you have, for instance, recurrent uh, ear infections, diarrhea, constipation, but also eczema, uh, skin uh, problems. You can also uh, detect it through a break in the growth and weight curve of a child. Some of some These are just some of uh, the signs that should alert you. Now, to confirm the diagnosis, there are different types of tests. You have the uh, skin prick test, but also blood work. And there's also what we call the oral food challenges. So here you're going to try to reintroduce the problem food in a controlled uh, hospitalized environment environment uh, to try to increase tolerance uh, as we go. But in most cases, there's actually no curative treatment for uh, food allergies. And uh, it's often uh, um, said that it's better to just try to ban it altogether from the diet. The good news, though, uh, Nadia, is that some uh, food allergies actually tend to get better or even disappear with time. So let's say cow's milk, egg, and soy allergies. But for other allergies like peanuts, uh, tree nuts, fish, seafood, it tends to uh, unfortunately persist throughout life. You mentioned a few of them there, but tell us what are the main allergenic food groups? Well, it actually depends on which country we're talking about and what type of diet. Uh, so for instance, in, in, in Japan, rice allergy is predominant, whereas in Scandinavian country, fish allergies are more prominent. Now in Western countries, it's said that only eight uh, food groups are actually responsible for 80% of the severe uh, allergies. Uh, so you can see them here, cow's milk, eggs, tree nuts, peanuts, selfish fish, soy, wheat. Uh, so, you know, we often hear about these but there are, they are indeed responsible for 90% of all severe allergies. And it seems that there is an increase in the number of people who develop food allergies. And it's actually true. According to a report by the CDC in the United States, there's a, an increase in the prevalence of allergies of 18% for children under the age of 18 uh, between 1997 and 2007. So today, food allergies are, uh, are affecting about 8% of adults and 10% of kids. We actually asked a health journalist here in France called Angeline galinier varan She's also uh, the author of a blog here in France to help uh, um, uh, parents who, uh, who are taking care of polyallergic uh, children. We asked her why these allergies are on the rise. Let's take a listen. Je pense que le contexte uh, actuel. Uh I think that in the current context, with the environmental conditions and the transformation of the foods that we find on supermarket shelves, we find that more and more of them are processed, with more and more additives contained in their ingredients. Today's children, particularly when they're small, eat vegetable-based baby foods in jars. And those jars almost always contain potatoes or apples. It's difficult to find food that is pure and natural. And all of this contributes to the rise in food allergies. 
tout cela contribue euh, à l'augmentation des, des allergies alimentaires. So Nadia, processed foods are one reason. We're also hearing scientists say that uh, more and more in the West, we're perhaps evolving in a uh, overly sterilized and sanitized world, and hence we're less exposed to pathogens and a little bit more fragile. Uh, now, it's important to say that online, you can really find a lot of information about how to bypass allergic products, how to organize your daily life, how to, uh, you know, uh, create avoidance diets, for instance, because when you get that diagnosis within a family, it's the entire household that needs to be reorganized. Organized. Just finally, is there anything that can be done to prevent food allergies in the first place? Well, actually, scientists don't always agree, but we're hearing that uh, some of them are saying that you should insist on avoiding exposure to uh, to um, uh, passive smoking in children and adolescents. They also emphasize on the importance of trying to uh, breastfeed to uh, for at least four or six months exclusively. And last but not least, to try to introduce solid foods really uh, while respecting a schedule by pediatricians. Julia Seeger, thank you very much. Thank you, Nadia.